Now let's look at a different kind of mutually recursive data definition. Here we have an entry and a list of entries. An entry models a file system like on your computer or in Google Drive. It can either be a file with a string name or a directory with a list of entries in it. And of course, a list of entries follows our usual list data definition. It's either empty or cons with an entry and another list of entries. Pairing a data definition with a list of that data definition in mutually recursive fashion is a common pattern that we'll see many times. And it's an important one to pay attention to. Let's write some examples of an entry with a list of entries. Here are four examples of entries, each one constructed with make file or make dir. Now let's write out the templates for an entry and a list of entry. Here we have the basics of the two templates, but there's a couple things that we're missing. First, dir entries of E produces a list of entries. That means we need to reference the template for processing a list of entries there. That's process LOE. Second, first of LOE produces an entry. That means we need to reference the template for entry, process entry. Now we've completed writing our templates and we can see that they refer back and forth to each other just like our data definition. Now let's write a function that handles entries. We're going to write the has file huh function. It's going to check an entry for a string, and we're going to search the whole entry, including its subdirectories. Let's start by writing some examples. Here we have four examples for has file. Now let's begin by writing our function following the template. What we'll notice when we go to follow the template is we need to write a helper function. So we're going to write the signature and purpose for that helper function as well. We've now written the signature, purpose, and examples for has file list huh, which checks for a given file name in a list of entries. Now we can write the templates for both of them at the same time, which successfully follows the templates we've already written and the data definitions that we're processing. Here's our template for has file, copied successfully and with appropriate renamings. One thing that's important to note is that has file list takes two inputs a list of entries, that is dir entries of E, and a string. So we need to supply that additional input. Let's make the same change inside has file list where we have the same problems. Now let's consider has file. When should we produce true and when should we produce false in the file case? We should produce it exactly when file name of E is the same as S. That completes our definition of has file. Has file list takes care of all of the rest. Now let's turn to has file list. What should we do in the empty case? Fortunately, we have an example that tells us that empty produces false. Now what should we do to combine the results of has file huh and has file list huh? If the file is in the first, we should produce true. If the file is in the rest, we should also produce true. If it's in neither one, we should produce false. So we have two booleans either one is true, we want true, otherwise we want false. That's a job for or. Now we're done with our function, and we can run our program and see that all the tests pass. Now that we're happy that our tests pass, let's see about a way that we could simplify all of the work that we've done here. First, let's notice that we wrote out list of entry explicitly, but we could use our existing abstraction list of to simplify things. Now we have a much simpler data definition because we don't have to explicitly write out list of specialized to entry. Now let's look at has file list huh. Has file list huh combines all of the elements, calling has file huh on each of them, and combining with or. There's a built in list abstraction that does just this. It's called or map. So let's write has file list huh using or map. Or map takes two inputs, a function and a list. The list is going to be LOE. The function needs to be a function that checks whether that element has the file s. We can write that with lambda. We write a function that takes one element, which is an entry, and we need to check if that entry has the file we're looking for. That we can just write with has file. Now we've finished writing has file list the easy way. We can even entirely avoid writing has file list by just writing the use of or map inside the definition of has file. When we look at things this way, 
we now see again that it parallels our data definition. Let's put those two next to each other. We see that entry refers directly to itself inside list up. And here we have has file refers directly to itself inside has an or map. We don't have to write things this way, but it's often convenient to use built-in list abstractions like or map, map, sort, filter, etc. when you have data definitions that refer to themselves inside of a list of. This is a pattern that we'll see many times and is extremely useful to have this in your bag of tricks.